Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. Deganji reporting for The Media Speaks. And we're going to get right into the news because we have a ton of stories today to get to. RT, 600 deaths in Israeli Gaza operation. Military hits mosques, stadium, homes, and hospitals. Now, I was talking about this with Anthony Court. Uh, we were, I should say, on the Facebook talking that's what talking is, the, the digital age. He's in Cali. Um, no, Anthony Court and I um, sometimes are on different sides of the Israel-Hamas conflict. However, I thought of something while talking to him. I think you have to be an absolute piece of crap to shoot rockets at somebody from a hospital, thus making Israel shoot back at the hospital and shoot innocent people. But you know what? He showed me a picture today. And fair is fair. It appears to be um, the Israeli side using human shields out of kids. Now, someone out there is going to say the kids were firing on them, they captured them, and then other people started firing on them while the first people were in transit. Show me proof of it, I'll believe it. Otherwise, I'm sorry, it's crappy. I'm not just going to say, oh, gotta love Israel, gotta love Israel. I didn't blame Israel for striking back, but at this point, I'm, I got a question for you. What if this Israeli Palestinian, by that I don't mean religions, Jewish, uh, Islam, I mean the upper echelon, what if this is simply Stalin versus Hitler? What if both sides here are simply run by the most despicable people ever? What if there isn't a right side here? I'm beginning to lean more and more and more in that direction because every time one side does something despicable, the other side answers it with something despicable, and it, it's, it's Stalin and Hitler. It really is. These are nasty, rotten people on both sides. Israel kept up attacks on Gaza on Tuesday, killing three Palestinians and hitting over 70 targets, including five mosques, a sports stadium, in the home of the deceased Hamas military chief. Now again, were they fired on from those areas? Who knows? But if that is the case, Israel is doing an awful poor job of stating its case. If, uh, if somebody shot from the stadium, then Israel should release to the world the proof that somebody shot from the stadium. I think a lot of people would be a little bit more forgiving. Since Israel isn't doing that, you have to wonder. You really do. Uh, I did a 180 on the Russia-Putin thing. I said that Russia was acting very, 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 very guilty because they were not doing what they just did. Now, if you look at the old video and you look at what I'm saying now, I'm more open to hearing that Russia didn't cause this. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But the way I'm tying this together, I should say the reason, if you're innocent, you can prove it. And... I just, I, I don't understand why both, I guess it all goes back to their religion. They can't share the land because the Israelis believe that it's inherently theirs and that no matter what they do, the, the murders and bombings will keep going. And among some factions, that may in fact be correct. Then you've got the Islamists who it's against the very statement of their religion. It's like asking a, a Baptist to get a 666 tattoo. It goes against what they're able to do in the confines of their religion. So, we end up picking sides between two people that are just vile. It says the latest casualties in the fortnight-long violence, this is dated the 22nd, have brought the Palestinian death toll to 570, according to AP. Almost 100 of them are children, and many others are civilians. So again, uh, I don't want you to pick a side. I don't care what side you what side you're on. If you were Israel, what would you have done when rockets came from the hospital? 
if you uh, were the Palestinians, would you be more careful about where you place your firing points from? The reason that's such a hard question to answer is you start to wonder if all of this is being done on purpose. The lies don't mean anything. The propaganda that both of them want to give you is what means something. I hope you're paying attention to this because this might be one of the best shows I think I've ever done on this topic. Additionally, nearly 500 homes have been destroyed in the Israeli bombardments and 100,000 people have been displaced, says Jens Lark, spokesman for the UN Office for Humanitarian Assistance at the Geneva News Briefing. On Monday, a hospital was hit in Gaza, with four people killed and scores of others and wounded in the attack. Thirty of the wounded were medics, according to Sky News. The U.S. is set to give $47 million in humanitarian aid to Gaza. This is from U.S. State Secretary, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry. So, the notion that we only give money to Israel is in fact not true. We're giving $47 million in humanitarian aid to Gaza. Point is, if you give people weapons, they either use them inevitably at some point in ways that you don't want. Or they get stolen, like ISIS just stole a bunch of st I think stingrays and a bunch of weaponry because we gave it to people that weren't able to keep it secure. But anyway, uh, I mean, the U.S. government, um, whether you like it or not, is giving money and aid to Gaza, which would be the Palestinians. The U.S. is deeply concerned about the consequences of Israel's appropriate and legitimate effort to defend itself, Kerry said, but always in, a in any kind of conflict, there is concern about civilians, about children, women, communities that are caught in it, Kerry added, as quoted by Reuters. And that's very true. It's... I'm telling you, people, we're dealing with two vile sides. There isn't, there isn't a side on this that you can look in the mirror and feel good about choosing at this point. We go on. Uh, Red Heifer discovered major obstacle to the rebuilding of the Jewish temple has been removed. American Dream Michael Snyder. This is bad news. Because this is only going to work to key up tensions even more. Uh, for those of you that don't care anything about this, skip ahead three minutes. Um, for everybody else, this is the last necessity standing between the rebuilding of the Jewish temple according to the Bible, which in Jewish law is a, uh, a sign of the ultimate end for us in Christian Christians. It's, it's a sign of, the, it's not the beginning of the end, the end is well on its way, which many of us have believed for some time. It's also going to anger the Palestinians, and I'm sure even Peter will weigh in on it. Um, this is just not good. Up until now, one of the major barriers to the rebuilding of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem has been the lack of a red heifer. That would be a cow for you Lady Gaga fans. A qualified red heifer has not been seen in the land of Israel for nearly 2,000 years, and without one, it, could be, it, would be, it would not be possible to resume temple worship. But now, a candidate has been found that could change everything. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem has released stunning video footage of the red heifer that they believe meets the biblical requirements. The red heifer was born in the United States and the owners of the red heifer contacted the Temple Institute in order to receive instructions about how to care for it. it. It was hoped that the red heifer will eventually be transported to the land of Israel and be used for purification of the priests and the vessels that will be used in a re rebuilt Jewish temple. This is a very big deal because without a red heifer, the temple could never be rebuilt. So needless to say, the video footage that you are about to see, and it's on here, is creating quite a stir in Jewish communities throughout the world. The Temple Institute contacted a documentary filmmaker to film the red, this red heifer, and this video was just released to the public earlier than last month. If you're not familiar with the Temple Institute, it's an organization located in the heart of Jerusalem that is dedicated to making preparations for the rebuilding of the Jewish Temple. The Institute was created, and it's created a whole host of items that are intended to be used in a future temple, including priestly garments made to biblical specifications. A seven-branched menorah made of pure gold, a golden incense altar, and a golden table of showbread. The, the following is what the Temple Institute has to say, and it tells you exactly what they're doing. 
says all of this has huge implications for world events. Traditionally, many Orthodox Jews have believed that the spotting of the red heifer would herald the, sec the coming of the Messiah. Again, they disavow Christ. Not good. Traditionally, uh, excuse me, and if this red heifer does indeed turn out to be a suitable candidate, one of the biggest obstacles to rebuilding the Jewish temple in Jerusalem will have been removed. For Christians, this is extremely exciting developments as well. The Bible tells us that there will be a temple standing in Jerusalem in the last days and that the Antichrist would defile it. I personally am a Christian who doesn't find that good. I'd rather not have to live through it. Maybe that's just me being a selfish Christian. The Bible says prophecy could never be fulfilled until the red heifer was found. I would just like to live my life and not be in the end times. <sighs> Yes, there are still many more obstacles standing in the way of the Jewish people rebuilding the temple. For one, the Islamic world would go into convulsions if Israel tried to build anything on or near the Temple Mount at this point. However, the Temple Institute and the whole host of Orthodox Jews are absolutely determined to make the rebuilding of the Temple a reality. And now they appeal to be one giant step closer to achieving the dream. I do believe that that is Israel's land. Um, but I also think, again, historically it's also the Arabs. They're going to have to share it, but this is not going to help things any. Um, Kid Daniels, Prison Planet, go in a different direction here. We'll go to our country. Border agents, the UN taking control of America's southern border. Two anonymous border agents reportedly told radio host Dave Hodges that under the pretense of labeling illegal aliens refugees, the United Nations is calling the shots on Americans' border operations, and the UN is deciding which immigrants to ship to various parts of the United States. That means our sovereignty. That means that our sovereignty is being put into the wood chipper. It means that the UN, a global body, is deciding what is going to occur in our country utter BS. That's why I think we need to get out of the United Nations as quickly as uh, our feet were carious. One of the agents said UN personnel are already present at various detention facilities in the American Southwest, according to Hodges, and are working with Homeland Security agents in gathering M313 gangsters. Uh, I've, I, I've actually watched quite a few documentaries on gangs. Uh, they're one of the more dangerous gangs in the world. And again, there are the thug, and I'm going to get mad, and shoddy, and booty, and ho. Oh. The, the, uh, the, the Mexican scum version of it. The, uh, uh, the cholos. A bunch of idiots that use their fist and guns because they can't use their brain. It says they captured from different roundups, patchworked together as a group, and then shipped together to various locations under the one perimeter of the United States. So they just pepper them in with the actual refugees, and now all of our cities get new M M MS-13 members. I objected to admitting MS-13 gangsters into the U.S., and I was told that we have orders to treat them like anyone else, the other agent told Hodges. Yeah, that's exactly how they're going to treat us. Hodge says that he asked one of the agents how they knew the immigrants were MS-13, and he told them he could tell by the tattoos. <clears throat> he recounted the fact that MS-13 operatives will have a tattoo with tears on their face, which represents a per person that they have murdered in the commission of their drug-related duties, Hodge, you, Hodge has reported. He said he possessed an M-13 member, he processed, excuse me, an MS-13 member who had nine tears on his face, and he was told to process him as an unaccompanied juvenile refugee. This is going to lead exactly where they want it to, because this will allow them to take guns away from all of us in the name of safety when they're the ones who cause the problem. Again, <clears throat> what's the solution to this? Decriminalization of drugs. It takes their money away, but God, they're broke overnight. Cholos! Police officers are already encountering these gang gay members, such as La Grula, Texas officer, who pulled over a vehicle last week carrying an aggressive MS-13 member. There's a link for it. Once I asked him to lift up his shirt, that's where I observed that he had MS-13 tattooed on his chest and his back, the officer stated. Those are really dangerous subjects. The UN, however, has already announced its intent to broadly designate illegal aliens, including MS-13 gang members from Central America, as refugees. 
goes on that representatives of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, who has no business putting his nose in our country, are intensely discussing in meetings the possibility of extending UN protection to the thousands of Central Americans crossing the U.S. border with Mexico illegally by defining them as refugees. Friends, this is why our country has no business being in the United Nations. They bring nothing but woe. Uh, Michael Snyder, economic collapse, more on this. Illegal immigration and gangs, someday our cities will burn because we didn't protect our borders. Did you know that the number of illegal immigrants that enter Texas each week is greater than the number of babies being born to citizens of that state? The mainstream media is shining the spotlight very brightly on all of the children, it's for the children, coming over, and there is a reason for that. They are trying to tug on our heartstrings, but there is another part of the story that you aren't hearing very much about. By refusing to protect our borders, the great, wonderful Barack Obama has allowed hundreds of thousands of gang members to illegally enter the United States and settle in our major cities. In many communities, gang activity is already wildly out of control, and someday our cities will burn because of the foolishness of the federal government. Excellently, excellently written paragraph. The Obama administration knows that one out of every five illegal immigrants have a criminal record. This is fact. And we are also just talking about illegal immigrants taking up... We're not just talking about illegal immigrants taking upskirt photos of women, which is a link, which happened in Texas. We're talking about rapists, murderers, drug dealers, and hardcore gang members. According to the Texas State Senator Dan Patrick, illegal immigrants have been formally charged with nearly half a million crimes in his state over the past four years alone. Also says that they are at least there are at least 100,000 illegal immigrant gang, gang members living in his state right now. But they're just children. So it says, why won't Obama do anything to stop the madness? There are at least 70,000 gang members living in Obama's home city of Chicago. Other estimates put that number closer to 100,000, but everyone agrees that it's a number that is growing every day. So it shouldn't surprise any of us that at least 40 people were shot in Chicago just over one weekend in July. I just fear for what Chicago will look like when things get really bad in this country. Many of our major cities are literally being transformed into tinderboxes that could erupt into flames at any time. And this is being done mainly to increase the, uh, the likelihood of getting new Democratic voters into the system, for one thing. So any of these people that are for the children, that, no. It's creating a gang problem and a prison problem here that is off the charts. And again, you could argue like I just did. It would take their power away to decriminalize drugs. But that's not going to solve the fact that we're still dealing with rapists and murderers. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor. Downtown Canton has the Arcadia Grill on Court Avenue. Zip by and get some of the best ravioli you've ever had. While you're doing so, look at the written works of Mike McLaughlin. You can find him at Facebook.com. Mike McLaughlin. He writes poetry. He writes vampire stories. Wicked good author. And if you're watching this, you're not some idiot that doesn't read clearly. So get some good fiction to read. I've also got stuff up on Amazon.com. Uh, the Lucky Leprechaun is on there, along with a novel I've written called uh, Sleep Unknowing and a, a persuasive essay on the historicity of Jesus Christ called Risen. Last but not least, the Seacrest Motel in Sandusky, right around the corner from Cedar Point. All the other places are charging like $120, $200 to stay there. Look how much it costs the hotel breakers. Once you've had a heart attack, Go down the road, right over the causeway. Five, six minute drive. Seacrest Motel. 50, 60 bucks a night. Beautiful beds, TV, beautiful tub, beautiful room. And let's face it, you get a massive room to go to Cedar Point. Why would you do that? You're not going to be in your room. You're going to be riding coasters. Go to the Seacrest Motel. Tell Vicky, TCV, The Correct Views is where you heard about it from. All right, guys, going to close out the show with a... i got like four more for you. PJ Dub Paul Joseph Watson video shows Ukrainian rebels were surprised the doomed aircraft was a commercial airliner. 
for those of you that haven't followed this thing, you, I mean, you guys all know I have no love affair with Putin. I do like the fact that he is for a sovereign Russia, and he is not a globalist, in the, at least the, the broad sense of the term. I appreciate that about him. I like that he's pro-Christian. I appreciate that a lot. I do have issues with his extremely communistic ties and his a just despicable record on uh, human rights. Again, the, the Pussycat Riot deserved punishment. They didn't deserve what they got. He is not a nice man, okay? He really isn't. But I was saying that Russia was acting extremely guilty because they weren't releasing a lot of the information. And we all know what's our government do when they're trying to hide something. They don't show you the 911 footage. They don't show you the school shooting footage. They hide stuff. Well... Putin did just that since that posting. And you know what? I really would like to see the other side because while I'm not a Putin worshiper by any stretch of the imagination, <coughs> excuse me, I am definitely open to listening before I call the man a murderer of 298 people. I'm seeing more and more too. I put this on my Facebook. It's YouTube. Uh, Facebook.com slash the correct views. There are people that think that this was an accident. That they didn't, that it was still very likely a Russian weapon, but that Vladimir Putin had nothing to do with it. And whatever target they were tracking, it was done by people with very little experience. Because the way these systems work, this missile that was shot, and I read this whole article on it, it tells you by the transponder, the signal being given off by the airplane, what it is. If it's a commercial airliner, it'll show up on its blip on the radar. Beside the blip will be the, the information regarding it. If you don't know what you're reading, then you just see blips and you shoot because you know how to make the rocket work. You figured that out. Uh, but you don't know how to use it and you shot the plane down. Now, I do, I really am leaning towards this being the Russian rebels work I don't see because I don't see a motive behind it going the other way but I have very little love for the Ukrainians right now anyway because if you can't choose to be Ukrainian not Russian not part of the EU Ukrainian if you're going to pick between these two idiot sides then you deserve kind of whatever you get because they both don't have a real good track record you'd be better off just being Ukrainian Anyway, it is looking more and more like uh, Mr. Putin on the Ritz. Uh, and I saw a meme. He looks just like Dave Mustaine. Look it up. It's kind of funny. Um, Mr. Putin may not have actually done this. And again, I'm, I'm glad. I, you know, I'd hate to think that he did. So we'll see as the facts come out. Ron Paul, once again, right. None of us know anything until all the facts come out. A video obtained by BBC News shows Ukrainian rebels expressing surprise at the discovery that they downed Malaysia Airlines flight that the downed uh, Malaysia Airlines flight was a commercial airliner suggesting that there was no deliberate plot to target the plane. The clip shows rebels examining the scene of the crash for the first time according to BBC reporter Fergal Keane and the video gives a picture of surprise. They're for they're foreigners. Who allowed them to fly here, asks one man. Contrary to media reports, which accused rebels of attempting to hide or cover up evidence, the men in the clip seem very keen to recover the black boxes from the crash site. Who knows why, but okay. While the video has doesn't prove whether rebels shot down the aircraft or not, it does clearly indicate that local militia in the immediate area were not part of the plot to deliberately target the plane. And again, that does seem to be more and more the the way that this is heading in, is that uh, it was a huge mistake. Says one of Kiev's central pieces of evidence, video of the Buck missile launcher apparently crossing the border back in Russia after the plane was shot down has since been debunked. Neither side wins by doing this on purpose. It's looking like now the, the goal is to figure out which side really messed up, which side really made an incompetent mistake. And again, we're dealing with really incompetent people here to begin with. They can't even choose to be their own people. They have to latch on to being Russian or European. That's like me as an American saying, well, I don't think we should go to Canada. No, no, we should become part of Mexico. How about we just stay America? 
Gun confiscation begins in New York. I did definitely want to get to this. I guess there's just two more. This is also PJ Dub. Lots of Paul Joseph Wolfson today. Second Amendment activists are expressing concern that authorities in New York State have begun moving towards mass gun confiscation after a man had all of his firearms seized by police over a 15-year-old misdemeanor charge. Now it's any excuse. Man, you people that said, oh, criminals shouldn't be allowed to have guns. We've got, like, parking tickets now becoming a reason to take your guns away. Uh, the smallest of crimes. It's a misdemeanor, people. In the post of NewYorkFirearms.com forum entitled New York State Police Just Came to My Home and Took Everything, a Nassau County man describes how he received a visit from state police who wanted to inspect the serial number of a semi-automatic rifle that he had purchased. So there you go, don't register your guns. Why? Because of this, don't register. I brought him to my safe, opened it, and, on the, sec and the second officer went in and took out my CX-4 Remington 70 SPS and Remington 870 shotgun. Then he says that I had a misdemeanor possession charge 15 years ago. That's over a decade for you hip-hop fans. And all the guns will be taken, the man wrote, adding that he was put through the FBI's National Instant Criminal Background Check System when he purchased the guns with no issues. The Post elicited a huge response from other forum members who encouraged the man to get a lawyer while advising him that he shouldn't have allowed the cops to enter his home without a warrant. Bingo! Others said the case highlighted how registration leads to confiscation. That is why you do not register. The man now faces uh, having to get permission from a judge in order to get his firearms returned. After the passage of the New York Safe Act back in April, and then it is called a Safe Act, you know you're doomed. It's like Homeland Security, doomed. It described Governor Andrew Cuomo as the toughest gun control law in the United States. Less than 10% of residents obeyed by registering their assault type rifles. So don't register. That's the lesson here. Friends, we have to go to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. That's right. We only do a dunce cap of the month once a month. And no matter how many times I try, all the stories and all the runner-ups still end up more than I can get to. So we have a the dum dee of the day uh, like we have right here. PoliceStateUSA.com. Get ready for this, guys. Utah man arrested for extinguishing a brush fire. The cop didn't even try to help. This is Santa Quinn, Utah, the dumdy of the day. A man was arrested for disorderly conduct and obstructing justice when he refused to stop spraying water on a brush fire that had ignited in a field behind his home. The incident happened on July 4th in a field located behind a row of houses. At approximately 9.30 p.m., some brush, fire caught, some brush caught fire due to errant use of fireworks. Spectators quickly assisted the one woman, and one woman called 911 for help. An apparent spark lit a tree over there from an old orchard on fire, said 36-year-old Santa Quinn resident Jason Thornton. Myself, my two nephews, and a few neighbors rushed to action, got our hoses out, containing the fire to one tree, waiting for the fire department to show up. Mr. Thornton continued that while fighting the fire, somebody said, stop. I told them no, in a very unpolite way. He told me again to stop. I said, no, I'm manning this fire. I'm not stopping until the fire department gets here. Anybody see any anything illogic, any illogical there at all? No, not at ever. Then the man came over and put me in a handcuffs and told me I was under arrest, he said. They gave me a citation for disorderly conduct and obstruction of justice. His wife Kelly told Police State USA that the arrest was totally uncalled for. He was out there with a lot of neighbors helping out, said Kelly. I called 911. They had the fire under control when a cop came up to them and told them to stop. Jason did not know he was a cop. How do you arrest somebody without telling them you're a cop? He told the cop he was not stopping until the fire department got there. While he was spraying down the embers, the cop told him he was arresting him. He put the man in handcuffs and took him into his car, Kelly told Police State USA. The fire department was not there yet. It was crazy, intense situation. The cop did not even try to help with the fire. To protect and to serve, to serve Barney Fife. 
Kelly told Police State USA that her husband is a first responder and has incident command training. One of the neighbors helping out was also a Santa Quinn firefighter. So there was no jeopardy here. He was not in danger in any way, nor was anyone else, he said, she said. The cop was identified by Mrs. Thornton as Officer M. Dressel from the Santa Quinn Police Department. Again, nobody hurt the man. Don't harass the man. If you do that, you're not a friend of the show. Politely call the Santa Quinn Police Department and ask why Officer M. Dressel did what I just told you he did. Be polite. We have rights. We have freedom to, to speak, to say our mind. Do not harass the police officer. I am obstructing justice, protecting my home and many others in Santa Quinn, Utah. That's crazy, said Jason Thornton. He was later bailed out of jail and made a video, which you guys can check. Friends, that is the dumb of the day, and it's really, really dumb. So wait till you see what the dunce cap of the month is. It's coming up. It'll be uh, first week or so of uh, August. August already. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off. Uh, you guys are the low deaf and the live viewers, and I thank you for watching me. If you're watching it later, though, and it's not live, then this one that I'm pointing at over there, that's HDEF. You can find that on the mediaspeaks.com. It'll upload after this one uh, renders over. And uh, you'll find the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. You will find really, really good articles, really good videos important news. Also, don't forget the Seacrest Motel. Sandusky, they will set you up very, very well. You will be happy that you went there and make sure you tell them TCV Sam sent you.